Good morning, morning. and happy birthday. Uh, Roughly 
what, just under 2,000 years ago, the, uh, the, the church was born. Uh, Pentecost is considered by many to be the birthday of the church. Had I thought about it earlier, I would have gotten us a cake. <laughs> but I didn't think about it. Uh, welcome to those of you that are here, uh, both in person and those who are watching online or will be watching later. A couple announcements as we begin. Uh, Bible study this week, we'll look at Matthew 28, 16 through 20, and we'll talk about the Trinity. So that'll be fun. Um, <laughs> I think there'll be a lot of good discussion there, as uh, one of the questions is always, well, what do we do with this? How do we, how do we talk about this without committing heresy? <laughs> so it'll be fun. <laughs> Say what? Like the triple berry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, which apparently has four berries. <laughs> but don't worry, I won't let that secret out to the public. <laughs> uh, tomorrow night, yeah, tomorrow's Monday already. Uh, I guess that makes sense since today's Sunday. Uh, tomorrow night, we'll have a board meeting uh, here at the church at 530. Um, if there's anything that you want me to put on the agenda, uh, go ahead and email me or just shoot me a message and I'll make sure to to get that on there. Uh, speaking of Triple Berry, uh, our dessert, Cape Family Fun Day is in two weeks. I've started to see the signs being put up already. So I'm excited for that. That'll be June 17th um, with a makeup day of June 18th if need be. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be nice that day. So that'll be cool. Um, if you'd like to, to volunteer, what was that? Oh, never mind. Um, if you'd like to volunteer to help either set up, uh, to go ahead and make up the desserts or to help at the station, uh, there's a sign, out sh sign up sheet on uh, the bulletin board out there. I think it'll be a really cool way to get to know our community a little better and hang out with people. And there's never a bad excuse to hang out at Fort Williams. So, uh, General Assembly is getting closer and closer. I think it's, what? less than three weeks away now. Um, so be in prayer for the denomination and for the resolutions that are being brought forward and the studies that are discussed and for the worship that's participated in, uh, as well as the election of two new general superintendents. Uh, again, as I said last week, this is, this is a little bit away, but just to, to keep your mind on it, we have our annual yard sale uh, mid-July so keep that in your minds. Uh, we got an email this week from Greater Portland Christian School. If you know of anybody that wants to be a high school science teacher, there's information in there. Um, as I was looking at it, I'm like, nope, I do not know anybody that wants to do that. But I told them that I would still let you guys know in case you guys know of anybody. And this isn't an announcement, and it's not as embarrassing since she isn't actually here. Uh, but Bridget had a dance recital last night, and I'm pretty sure she killed it. It was, and I, I mean that in a good way. Uh, she absolutely rocked it. It was, it was really fun. And I hope she watches this later so she knows that we mentioned her. Um, but yeah, she, she did a fantastic job. There was one point where she did some dance move, and I told Tommy and Mona afterwards, had I done that, I would not be preaching today because you guys would have to try to unstick me. Um, but so if, if she's here next week or whenever you guys see her, just, uh, just let her know that you know, we're, we're proud of her and that she's using her skills and talents. And it's, it's easy to brag when, when we only have one teen. I, I don't feel like I'm, I'm excluding anybody. But, uh, but yeah, she, she did awesome. And I was hoping to embarrass her, but she's not here. <laughs> So when you watch this later, I hope you get a little red. <laughs> it's Pentecost, so it's fitting. Uh, if you would join me in our call to worship, it, it's responsive. God of wind and fire. God of mighty oceans and still waters. God of bread and wine. So pour out your spirit. Fill us with holy food. 
May our hearts and our hands be open wide to receive your gifts of life. Amen. Come, let us worship. If you want to, you can stand together and we will be worshiping God.
if the ushers would prepare themselves and if you would join me in prayer today. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, would you grant us the same spirit to have right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. God, we pray that you uh, bless this time together, that you bless this offering, that you, would re- that you would receive it gladly, and that you would use it to spread your kingdom and to build up your kingdom and to make known the only name that is worthy, the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, continue uh, to bless our time together. May we be open to your spirit and be open to your movement. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. prayer of illumination. Would you pray with me that we ask God to open our hearts and our ears to to what he will speak to us through his word. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. Good morning. I'm reading for you today from Psalm 104, verses 24 to 35. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things, both large and small. There are the ships go to and fro, and Leviton, which you form to frolic there. These all look to you to give them food at the proper time. Then, when you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. When you sent your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, 
who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But as many sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. May the Lord add his blessing to these words. Our second reading this morning is found in Genesis 11, verses 1 through 9. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come. Let us build ourselves a city within a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us, go to da- let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole, or- whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. Please stand together as we sing our hymn to bring in the message today. passage for our sermon today 
comes from Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 21. The coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Par- Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and, uh, and Arabs, and both or in our own languages we hear them, speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and smoky mist, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. So today is a fun day. Uh, As I mentioned earlier, it is the birthday of the church. It is the day that many consider the the church to officially be born, the day that that something brand new was completely marked. It's also our last Sunday in what's called the Christ semester. In the church here, there's two semesters. There's the Christ semester, which follows the life of Christ, his, his birth at Christmas, or waiting for his birth at Advent, his birth at Christmas, his baptism, uh, his time in, in the desert during the season of Lent, uh, Holy Week, the week of his entry into Jerusalem, and the commandment he gave to love one another, his crucifixion, his resting, I say resting, his death while in the tomb, or being dead in the tomb, and then Easter, which he is, he is risen from the grave, which takes us throughout uh, the season of Easter, leading us to the ascension, and then finally to today. And then from here on out, it's what's called ordinary or the church semester, where we focus on the life of the church and how we Having seen the life of Christ, how do we now live into his life and let his life live into us? And today is important because Christ has ascended back to the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where he sits and he mediates for us you know, between God and humanity. But he didn't leave us alone. He promised that his Holy Spirit would come and that we would be able to live a life like Christ lived because of his spirit. 
And that's what we celebrate today, that God sent his spirit not to the select few, not, to, not just to the disciples, not just to Mary, not just to a few people throughout history, but that when the Holy Spirit came, it came like a rushing wind and it filled the crowd and it filled the people that were gathered and they were able to take it out and spread the Holy Spirit to others and, and help others to see that the Holy Spirit can dwell in them as well. A couple of the churches I've been to, well, actually most of the churches I've been to in my life, uh, at least the last three, each time I, I've left, and I don't know if this is just in my experience or if most churches do this, um, I can only speak from what I've seen. I've not heard many of my friends talk about something like this. Uh, but when I left each of the last three churches I was at, they specifically did a sending at the end of it. You know, I, I've normally seen it done for like when missionaries come, but each of the last three churches... Uh, North Street, Knoll Avenue, and my home church, Woodbridge. Each of them were specific that when somebody was leaving the church, they sent them. And so when I was at North Street, uh, my last Sunday of college, my last Sunday I was there, uh, Pastor Jeremy called me up, and he and Pastor Dennis and other people came around and they laid their hands on me and they said, you are leaving us to go someplace new. We are sending you out in the spirit. At Knoll, um, it was very similar. They called me up and they prayed for me and they sent me out and we had a potluck afterwards because they were good Nazarenes. <laughs> but it wasn't all right, Brent's leaving, he's going someplace new. It was, we are sending you in Christ to minister in Cape Elizabeth now. And it was the same uh, down at Woodbridge. My, my, the very last Sunday before I started, I was home. And so the pastor called me up and had me kneel at the altar you know, and he said, even though you've been in many places, we've still considered you our own. Um, now that you are officially going to pastor, we'll still, we'll still claim you, but we can't say that you're our own. Um, so he had people come and, and gather around me and pray over me, and they specifically sent me from Woodbridge to Cape Elizabeth. There was an act of sending and going out. And, and each time... Um, each time it was, it was great because it was never about me. It was about being sent forth in the Spirit or sent forth in Christ. It was, we are sending you in the Spirit to do the work of Christ. It was never, we're sending you so that you'll be happy or we're, we're sending you so that life will be good. It was always, we're sending you in the Spirit to do the work of Christ to build up his name rather than your own. Which I think is something all churches should do if they don't. When somebody leaves, to send them out in blessing and send them out in the spirit, not, not in their own name, but in the name of, of Christ so our Genesis passage today isn't technically the Old Testament lectionary passage, but I, I, I mentioned this on uh, Tuesday night, and I think I mentioned it in the announcements last week. I can never read the Pentecost story without thinking of the, the Tower of Babel. I'm not sure if Luke intended that connection to be made, but it always... It, it's always there when I think about when I think about Pentecost, because Pentecost, in many ways, is the exact opposite of the Tower of Babel. In the Tower of Babel, we see that people are coming together and they decide that they're going to build this tower that can reach to heaven, which 
you know, with our modern sensibility, we, we realize how ridiculous that sounds. But then I think about it, and I'm like, well, I guess that's not really that ridiculous. When I was younger, I wanted to be an astronaut. I didn't care to go to space. I didn't care about the moon or the planets. I wanted to be an astronaut so that I could ride on a rocket and potentially see what heaven looked like. And as I got older, I realized, oh, that's not how it all works. Um, but so I'm able to understand why they kind of thought that they could do something to reach God, that they could build themselves something that would be high enough that they could reach God and reach where God dwelled. And if they could reach where God was at, what makes them any different than God? They could become like God. They could, they could go to his dwelling and, and be, be where he is. In many ways, this was vertical. You know, towers are vertical, and it was, it was all about themselves. It was, if we can become, if we can become like God, if we can reach where God, where God is, not only can we be like God, in a sense, we're greater than God because we were able to overcome where we were and get to where He is. Let's build a tower so that we can make our name known, that people might know us. Let's build ourselves up as we build this tower. And it was is, is interesting to me, it, it, it jumped out to me while Mona was reading it today, that they had the fear of being scattered that they're going about this, let's do this to make our name known, but let's not fail because if we fail, not only will we not be known, we'll be scattered. And they weren't able to reach God and they were, they were made confused. They went out not able to understand each other so that they could not even attempt to continue to build themselves up like that. Which leads us however many thousands of years later, to, to Pentecost. We see the disciples who have listened to Jesus. They are waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. They are gathered together. And then all of a sudden, a mighty rushing winds and, and tongues of flame come upon them. And the Holy Spirit is there. And the Holy Spirit is dwelling in them, in them now. And we see in many ways a complete reversal of what Babel was. Instead of us trying to build our way up to God, God has again come down to us. God came down in the form of Christ where he lived and dwelt among us, and then Christ told us, I'm sending you a comforter, that we don't have to reach up to God because God has already come and reached down to us which is the exact opposite of Babel, trying to build our way up to God when instead all we had to do was wait for God to come to us. Instead of going vertically and trying to spread our own name and make our own name greater, God sends us out vertically, or not vertically, horizontally, excuse me. He sends us out horizontally and he tells us Go and spread the name of Christ. Don't, don't try to build up your own name. Spread the only name that is worthy to be spread, spread out. The name of Christ, the one which is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, who mediates between God and humanity. The name by which we are saved. And so unlike the fear of being scattered, the disciples and the crowds would come to have joy in being scattered because they're not being scattered and having their name be shot down. They're being scattered and they're now able to go and spread the name of Jesus Christ throughout Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the world. And so while the Tower of Babel, their builders were spread in separation while they were scattered in separation, here at Pentecost we see that the believers are being spread out and scattered in unity. 
with one common mission to make known the name of Christ rather than, than their own. And as they're scattered, they don't go in confusion, but instead they go in the understanding. They go in the understanding that the message of the good news of Jesus Christ is not just for one or not just for a specific group of people, but instead it's for everyone who will listen, for anyone that has ears to hear. There is not confusion, but there is unity. Which brings me to one of my favorite parts of the Bible as, as, they're talk, as, as I'm talking about this unity and having ears to hear. The way of Babel had been the, had been the way of life for as long as it had been known. Confusion and disunity and, and not being able to understand one another. And so the crowds look up to Peter and they go, Peter, are you drunk? <laughs> to which I think is one of the funniest responses in the Bible. Peter goes, no, it's only nine in the morning. It just cracked me up because instead of being like, no, no, I'm not. It's, you know, maybe if we were, you know, four hours later, that may have been the reason. But no, this is the morning. I don't get drunk in the morning, only in the evening. And so <laughs> it, it just cracks me up that that was Peter's response was, nope, it's only 9 a.m. It's got to be the Holy Spirit. And so being enlivened with the Holy Spirit, being, I, am, I imagine in many ways it must have been like being drunk, just the excitement and the, and the change. And I, am, I imagine the disciples had to be a little bubbly at this point, had to be, had to be giddy with, with the joy of the Spirit to be, to be able to tell the crowd that the good news, I lost my place, to be able to tell the crowds the good news in a way that they would be able to understand it so that the crowds could hear the good news and not only understand it and not only comprehend it, but do something about it, that they could go out from that place and spread the good news. The Tower of Babel God stopped the spread of bad news of us trying to become like God on our own, which, which never works. I don't, I don't know if you've tried to become God. It's not very easy, and it doesn't work. We can't do it. But the good news is we don't have to because God became like us so that we could dwell with him forever so that we can know what the kingdom of God is like. We don't have to build our way up to it. It comes down to us. And that part of our task then is to, to go out and spread this good news. The Holy Spirit has come down and we, we've seen what the kingdom of God is like and we're not supposed to keep that a secret. It's not supposed to be this great secret that only you and I and, and a few others know. No, we're supposed to go out and tell everybody we can. As, as I've said multiple times since I've been here, in many ways, the best way to describe Christianity is merely one beggar telling another beggar where to find food. We're merely people that can now go and tell others the good news and where to find the good news. And all of this, talking about the birthday of the church and, and, and what that was like and what it meant and, and what it means for us today, it, it, it made me think of something this morning. As I was driving back from Hannaford, um, there was, I, I guess there's a 5K going on today, um, which I didn't time out very well, so I had to wait for like five minutes just sitting there as all the runners ran by. And so I, I started thinking about the assignments I have due later today and later this week and, and about today being Pentecost. And one of the things that I thought of 
so the class I'm in with Jeff Barker is ecclesiology. And ecclesiology just means the study of the church. And so um, that word ecclesiology comes from the Greek word ekklesia, which is the word that they use for church. But the word ekklesia literally just means the called out ones, ones who have been called out, ones who have been taken out of where they are and, and put someplace new. And that's what we celebrate today, that we are called out, that we are called out of the world into the kingdom of God, that is the kingdom of good news. But I, I, I don't want to leave it there because that's where a lot of people leave it is we're called out of the world. We're called into the kingdom of God. And it's true. But as Pastor John would say, but wait, there's more. Not only are we called out of the world and into the kingdom of God, we're called to go back to the world. We're not called to disassociate ourselves from out there and contain ourselves within these four walls and, and not care about what goes on with our neighbors. But instead, we're called to go back into the world in the power of the Spirit to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, to let them know that there is a mediator who mediates on our behalf to God the Father. We are called to be a people who don't hoard the Holy Spirit, but we tell everyone we can. This is what the Holy Spirit has done in my life. You should come meet her. This is what God has done for me. Let me tell you a little bit about who he is. Pentecost is a day of power but it's not a worldly power. It's not one that builds ourselves up. It's a power that makes it easy, not always easy, but it makes us able to not care about our own name, but to care about the only name that matters, the name of Jesus Christ. And so we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, but we don't just celebrate it in these four walls. As our service will come to a close later, we will leave this place and we will go out in the spirit to spread the name of Christ and the good news. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we are thankful that you do not keep your spirit to yourself but rather that you invite us all to receive it. That you invite us to embrace her and that you invite us to go forth in her power. We are so thankful that you, you don't just call us out of the world and have us be our own little our own little island separated from everything else. But that you call us into your kingdom and that you call us into yourself, that we may be nourished and that we may come to know who you are and come to realize our purpose, that we might be sent back out into the world to invite them into your kingdom as well. That it's not just an escape from the world, but rather it's, it's how we save the world. It's how we, it's how we interact with the world. God, thank you for not letting it end at Babel. Thank you for not saying, all right, you guys tried, you guys tried to reach me. I'm gonna show you how impossible it is. Thank you for instead saying, you can't reach me on your own. That's why I'm gonna come to you. 
try as hard as you might, I know you can't do it. And that's why I will do everything that I can to come to you. God, we thank you for coming to us in the person of Jesus Christ and to showing us the fullest revelation of who you are, for showing us who God is and what God is like. We thank you that he would go to the deepest points in order for us to know you, not merely leaving the throne above to walk on earth, but to die on a cross and to be buried, to go to the lowest point that is humanly possible. But we thank you that he did not stay there. God, we thank you that you rose Jesus Christ from the dead, that all might see the power and the glory of you We thank you that he is ascended and sitting back at your right hand and that he is constantly pleading our case to you, that he is constantly, constantly reminding that you will go as far as it takes to reach us. And God, we thank you for sending your spirit that we don't have to go out and try to do this this Christian walk on our own, that we don't have to try to live like Jesus by our own power, but rather that we walk this life in the power of your spirit, that she leads us and that she guides us, and sometimes she kicks us in the direction we need to go. God, we thank you for coming to us for caring that much about us. God, as we leave this place later, remind us that you are still pouring out your spirit on people. That Pentecost did not end, but even today there are still people that are receiving your Holy Spirit as she falls upon them. God, we thank you for this. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. So the last couple of weeks we've been trying, trying a few different things and this week we'll, uh, we'll, we'll kind of go back to how things normally are. We'll, we'll sing a prayer chorus, but I, I would like to continue to extend the invitation that during our prayer chorus, if you would like to pray at these altars, they're open. If you'd like to pray in your seat, you're already there, so they're open. Um, if you're like me and you need to, to move, feel free to do that as well. Just take this time to sing and to pray and to, to reflect on the fact that the Holy Spirit has come into your lives.
would you join me in prayer? God, we come before you acknowledging that there are times when we have tried to keep the Holy Spirit to ourselves where we have looked at your coming as an escape pod rather than a rather than a uh, a salvation for the world. God, for those times when we have tried to to keep your spirit for ourselves and to keep others out, God, forgive us. When we have failed to see the way that your spirit is working in and around us, God, forgive us. For those times when we have and we have not wanted to be scattered or spread out because we, we wanted to maintain our comfortability. God, forgive us. And God, thank you for the fact that you have forgiven us and that you do forgive us and that you continually send your Holy Spirit to prompt us to walk the way of life that you would have us walk. God, thank you for sending us your spirit, for justifying us and for sanctifying us. Thank you for calling us out into the world by the power of your blood as your body here on earth to spread the good news of Christ Jesus. God, we pray these things in your name. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Lord, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Lord, you sent forth your spirit and all of creation rejoices. May your glory endure forever. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name, the only name that matters, and we join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who lived and died that we might inherit your Holy Spirit. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, God, you gave birth to your church, which we celebrate today. You delivered us from slavery of sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant, both by water and by the Spirit. And so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks over it, and he broke it. He then gave it to his disciples, and he told them, take and eat. This is my body, which has been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Later that night when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks over it and he gave it to his disciples and he said to them, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves with praise and thanksgiving 
as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. For we are called to be saints and to bring the world to Christ. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Would you join me in praying with confidence that which Christ taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today we'll, we'll do things a little differently than we've been. Uh, today, when we receive, we will do it by intinction, which is you'll take a piece of the bread and dip it into the cup and partake as it is here. And if you're unable to, to come to the front, I will bring it to you uh, so that you can partake as well. And I wanted to do it this way today because Pentecost reminds us that we are one. There is one loaf because we are one body in Christ. There is one cup because we all take from the same cup of salvation. While in many ways it's nice to do uh, in the individual taking and receiving at the same time, uh, Brenda pointed this out to me a couple months ago that there's something about hearing everybody crunch the little wafer at the same time and hear the clinking of the glass on the back of the pew at the same time. That reminds us that we are one, that we do this in the same spirit. And this is just another, uh, another example that we are one. There is one loaf and there is one cup. And this is good bread. I'll just say that now. Feel free to take as large a piece as you want I have more back there. So don't be shy in, in receiving Christ and receiving the Spirit today. So as you are ready, come, come and receive.
We are one in Christ. We are one in the Spirit. There is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. There is one salvation. So we are thankful that we are able to come and taste just a small sampling of what it is to be, of what that kingdom will be like. Being one with one another in the spirit. Would you pray with me? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Lord, we ask that you touch us with your spirit and that you ignite our hearts with faith and power. Grant, O God, that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We ask that you join with us and stand as we sing our second hymn. Let every Christian tongue proclaim the joyful sound. The comforter has come. Go out and spread the good news that not only do we not have to reach to God to become like God, 
but that he has come down to us to meet us where we are and to guide us and to lead us and to walk with us. So go out into the world. Go in grace and peace to love and serve the Lord and your neighbor. You are sent back out there. You are dismissed.